You make really creative ads. You're a brilliant filmmaker. And I th yeah, I'm interested to know how do you see those ads getting placed in the future? And there's some things that come into my mind, films like Starship Troopers and Robocop series, you know, they sort of have these ads of the future and I'm interested to know what's your vision of ads for the future. All right, welcome back to Futurist World, everyone. I'm Mike Hill. Uh, Futurist World is the home for big ideas about the future. I'm so excited today to be talking about the future of advertising with one of my personal heroes, Scott Now from The Monkees. Scott is an amazing guy, but also a brilliant advertiser. He's the co-founder of The Monkees, which is based in Sydney, Australia, uh, which is where we're sitting today. And, you know, he's been awarded, you know, through the wazoo, you know. Uh, he's achieved everything you could hope to in this industry and is the mastermind behind the Australia Day Lamb ads, which I think are a bit equivalent to, you know, Super Bowl Day advertising in America. So, Scott, so good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Mike. Uh, I need you to introduce me to every dinner party I go to. <laughs> Scott, we're talking about the future of advertising and we were meant to be doing this interview back in March and then yes. COVID hit. So we've been delayed about, you know, nine months or more. Uh, the world's changed, right? Like the way that lockdown affected the world mm. in terms of um, how we consume must have affected how advertising is getting served up. Is that true? COVID has accelerated the digitization of how people buy. And you, you've seen the, I mean, some, some companies weren't doing so well like airlines and other companies like Amazon or online sellers are doing incredibly. So that has changed how we are served ads. I mean, any, any change in the world like that and what we're starting to look for, and if we're buying increasingly in different places, that's going to change how we see and consume advertising. So what does that mean for us as consumers? What are we going to what, what are we going to see in our lives now changing in terms of how ads are served up? So yeah, the increasing digitization of how we consume is affecting how we receive advertising. It's how we give our data and how that data is used to serve advertising back to us. So Organisations out there are creating data profiles. There's probably a few of me sitting out there in some server somewhere in different forms. And those servers know how to get to me and have what to show me. And that's becoming increasingly prevalent. And I mean, COVID and the increased digitization of consumption is just speeding that up. I don't want you to give away any of your trade secrets, but if we just draw back the curtain a little, in terms of what agencies like yours get to see in the big data, how much do you know? Like how, how much information do brands have about their consumers? Brands have a lot of information about consumers and some brands are better at it than others at collecting that information. The big social platforms and the, and the, you know, the, big, um, the big players in the digital space are gonna have much better data sets on people out there than anybody else in any organization. Because they're, they're, they're the intermediary, where you're getting to that brand most of the time. And they're pushing us, you know, Amazon's and the Facebooks of the world are, are pushing us through their platforms to the companies that we wanna buy from. So trust is gonna be a big part of the future of advertising, I imagine, based on that. So how do you guide and navigate that with your clients, you know, in terms of how to build trust into the future? Because it seems that consumers are getting more and more skeptical. Yeah, well, I think they're waking up to the fact that uh, we should, probably shouldn't be giving away so much of ourselves. You're asking me the big questions here, Mike. This is, this is getting um, very kind of physical, but mm -hmm. Trust is probably the single biggest thing you can build into a brand now. Right. And that being that for so long, you were able to control very well the kind of messaging that came out of your client's brand. So you'd be able to put out any kind of made up stuff about a brand and that would then represent the brand in consumers' minds. Now, there is so much information out there if you, if you start talking to a brand, I can look it up straight away and within five seconds I'll know whether I like it or not. And you, so you've got a situation where brands have to be more transparent and they've got to start looking at themselves in terms of not what they put out there, but it's why they're doing it. So people are responding to the why of why organisations do certain things. They've you know, a purpose behind it and identifying with that 
and you've got you have this situation where people can find out everything they want to know about a brand in about 30 seconds and the truth about things the bad things that they've done the good things that they've done so what we're trying to do is develop a transparent relationship with anyone that's going to interact with them and create that trust so it's in in a world where meat is exploding where they can get things through their phones they can get through, through it anywhere the only thing you've got as a brand is that trust with your consumer that feels like a massive shift. If we look at the continuum from past to present to future uh, and that golden age of advertising in the 50s, you know, where advertisers just kind of said, here it is, you know, and consumers bought, you know, like uh, that, what you're talking about right there about a foundation of trust seems like it's almost at the other end of the spectrum. I don't know if that's true or not. We, have we been on a continuum and slowly moving there? Uh, or is this a big time of change? It is a time of change, absolutely a time of change. Well, the, the freedom of information that you have to all these brands is there. So it's necessitated a change on those brands' behalf. The great work that was done back in the 50s and 60s, for example, was still truthful. Mm -hmm. The best advertising is truth and based in truth. And because, of course, truth builds trust. You're, you know, in my opinion, you know, one of the most gifted TV admin you know we have in this part of the world you know are you, are you being paid for comments? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> you're gonna end up rich at the end of this so i, I want to know where you see that going in terms of tv ads and how they're going to get served up because clearly as you said with uh, video on demand and how we're consuming uh, our video content now it's totally changing mm. um, but you know you make really creative ads you're a brilliant filmmaker and I th I'm interested to know how do you see those ads getting placed in the future and there's some things that come into my mind films like Starship Troopers and Robocop series you know they sort of have these ads of the future and I'm interested to know what's your vision of ads for the future. What you're doing essentially with brand advertising is creating stories for that brand and how they come out, it might be different. I mean, a few years ago, there wasn't audiobooks, but now there are audiobooks. Now there's all kinds of ways of, of, of reaching people. Yeah. It's not very different from what anyone was ever doing. The fundamentals of brand strategy and communicating on a brand's behalf mm -hmm. are exactly the same as they, they used to be and creating that trust and creating a personality that the, that consumer can uh, relate to. It's just how you see them are going to be different. So in Robocop when there's a, or, or um, Back to the Future when there's a shark that comes off a billboard, yeah. I mean, that's a media idea. Yeah. So I'm sure that's going to happen. We already see augmented reality and these sort of things that can come up now. Yeah. But you are still telling a brand story through that or a product story. Mm -hmm. Which really pitches you more into content creation, you know, than ever. It's a, it's a real merging now, isn't it, of these visual arts. Uh, do you see that in your company here and the sort of work that you're producing? Yes, we do. And part of the reason we started the company was that we were just sick of getting stuff pushed at us in terms of being interruptive and annoying. And the best, in a changing and exploding media landscape, the best chance of capturing people's attention is to give them something they, they want to watch. I, say, yeah. I, I mean, it's not rocket surgery. <laughs> <laughs> The hard thing yeah. is creating that yeah. on behalf of the brand and making it something that people want to watch. I mean, there's gifted filmmakers and novelists and all that, extremely talented people who are um, doing that. We've got to try and do the same thing on behalf of brands. Yeah, yeah. So how do brand? How do you kind of marry up brands with talent? You know, because that's a, such a key part of this, you know, and you're taking them on a pretty different style of journey now to what they may be used to in advertising. Brands have had to make themselves more open to exploration in terms of the, the kinds of talent they engage with or the kinds of stories they're, they're going to tell. Brands, they have to know why they do, what they're all about, what, what is the essence of their brand. So this is, sounds boring, but the strategy behind yeah. getting that brand to understand what it is, mm. is, is I think more important than ever. Yeah. And then you can make those creative leaps into how you're telling those stories, who you're engaging to get them to do it. And that, I mean, to us, that's, um, 
it's really exciting because they have to do stuff that gets noticed or they just not going to get noticed and that is the single worst thing you can do in marketing yeah is not get noticed brands and particularly the really big ones have a hugely important role to play in society i think Democracy is in crisis to some extent at the moment based on the type of leadership we're getting in some countries around the world. And these big brands now have the opportunity to lead in a way that is profound. You know, it's as profound as a nation state when you're looking at the really big ones. Um, how do you talk to your collaborators in brands about that responsibility and how to actually use it um, as a point of difference? That, that's a great point and there, have, there has been a leadership vacuum, I suppose, in in terms of the, the kinds of leaders we would traditionally look up to, the, the governments of the world that used to be, you, this is how the world should be, it was quite firm, we would understand that. Here is our stance on issue X and you didn't challenge that. And I think now there are so many issues that people care about that governments around the world aren't responding to, because they don't have the capacity, the willingness or whatever it may be, to respond to that. And brands have stepped into the breach. If you had a, a friend who turned up to a party and started talking about an issue that you know that they don't give a shit about and they just want to talk to you about it because they think they can keep your attention, that's inauthentic and you're not going to be talking to them for too long. So we view it that way. You, you've, you've got to, if you're going to talk about an issue, you've got to have the, an authentic place to be talking about it from. And I guess this leads us to the real point of this episode, I think, which is when we think about brands and advertising and the world we want in the future, when we look at a longer horizon and where we want to go, there's no doubt in my mind that advertising has the power to shift consciousness and brands have the power to make social change. Do you see that as well? Do you think that there is ever more responsibility on the shoulders of advertisers and brands to actually make the change we need to see in the world today? Yes, brands have the ability now more than ever before to change society, particularly when there isn't that sort of the leadership in whatever way it might, it might be from a government, for example. Mm -hmm. the, it, it's a tricky space to be because you're dealing with marketing managers within those brands and CEOs within those brands and the, the collection of people within those brands who are gonna be there um, for a certain amount of time, then there'll be another collection of people representing that brand. But what you can do in that time is um, engage in issues that are meaningful to that brand and are meaningful to their audience and the intersection and that Venn diagram is, is a really powerful place to be. Particularly the bigger brands that are well established, you know, they can look further into the future um, than I think political parties can a lot of the time. Uh, are you seeing this happening? What sort of horizons are your bigger clients looking towards? Well, to give you an idea, we've just done a project which envisaged uh, insurance in 2030. What's that gonna be? How are we gonna be living? What kind of, is it going to be about the individual? Is it going to be about the, the object you're insuring? You know, all these different things. You're basically looking into the future and figuring out what that's going to be. And that allows for planning and how we start talking about that a long way out. Mm -hmm. Advertising can be um, a really powerful force for change in society when you're acting on behalf of an interest group. Yeah. For example, um, the Indigenous uh, recognition referendum that's approaching. I mean, we're a we're a society that's um, a Western society that's invaded a, a country and and, and marginalised Indigenous people and their, their culture and their society, and we, we continue to do so sadly. And the re we want to have a referendum in this country to recognise the Indigenous people in the constitution as having sovereignty. The Indigenous group want to have a voice to Parliament which is an advisory panel to parliament uh, enshrined in the constitution, which is, I think if you explain it to anyone, it's absolutely fair. I mean, there's no argument, right? But these things move through government at a glacial pace. And what we can do as advertisers and people who can talk in a concise way on behalf of a movement is to mobilize people to get in front of what the government's thinking and force the issue. So if you get enough people to get behind an issue, yep. 
and be able to like this one that it's important to them and say, look, this is what we should be doing. You, you want to, you can get it to a place where a government can't ignore it. And that I think is how you can start moving society forward. That's the utopian view of advertising. And I totally agree with that. Like the power to sort of get government into position that they're going to be on the wrong side of history unless they take a certain action. Mm. And I think that was done very successfully here in Australia around marriage equality. Yeah. And it sounds like you're going for it again around... Well, we, you can only hope so. And, and the, I mean, marriage equality was a good example. You've got to be pretty concise about it. And two words is good. Yeah. People understand the issue of marriage equality. Uh, more vexed issues are harder to explain, but political advertising over the years has, done, has, is, has been a powerful force. The, these things, come up, it's time, Gulf Whitlam. It's, uh, or even that Hope Obama, yeah, Obama yeah. image. These are all pieces of communication that capture the public imagination and push society one way or the other. And you'd hope that the people working on behalf of those kinds of people are just working on the, <laughs> for the good part. Yeah. For the utopian part, not the dystopian part. Yeah, but I mean, in America, we've seen the other side of the coin, haven't we? And, you know, yeah. are very successfully done there, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, getting marginalised groups to buy into a new vision. Mm. So, Scott, we're almost at the end of our journey today. Thanks so much for this. I just want to wrap up by just hearing your thoughts about your hopes for the future of advertising. You've been in the game now for, you know, what, 20 odd years and more? What are we uh, talking here? Yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm still 25. 25. I've just worked out. 10 I'll, years, I'll yeah, it. okay. <laughs> so, you're a noob. No, you're at the top of your game. Where are we going? Like, what gives you hope? What, what do you want to see in the future of advertising? Uh, what gives me hope is, firstly, truth wins. And it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a brand or a product uh, or a company. Uh, truth wins in terms of building trust, building... Um, basically sales for companies and I like the fact that uh, if, you, if you're honest about um, how you communicate and what you're communicating and you do it in an entertaining way it's a it's a really good formula I also would like to think that communicate concise communication no matter whether it's for a brand or whether it's for a cultural movement or any other kind of um, company or position it's never ever been more valuable. The future of advertising really is still to be doing the, the very core thing that they've been doing so well for so long and um, doing it in an honest way. So while there are all those technological things that are making, you know, there's exciting stuff, there's sharks coming out of billboards, there's <laughs> things recognize you and sending you messages. Yeah. But the core, the core stuff is, is as important as ever. Yeah, great. Scott, thanks again for being on the show. <laughs> That's a wrap on the future of advertising. Uh, check out futurist.world uh, for description and you can check out the show notes uh, to get links back to Scott's amazing work, hopefully including this year's Australia Day Lamb ad, which will be well, coming out. it's not about out. Australia Day anymore, is it? Yeah, what's it called now? Well, a couple of few years ago, we recognised that a, uh, a company that stood for unity, bringing yep. people together, couldn't really re be represented through a day that's so divisive. It is so divisive, we've yeah. moved to a, um, you know, a more unified approach. Okay, cool. It, does it still come out at around the same time of year? Yeah, early, early Jan. Okay, early Jan, great. So we'll look forward to that early 2021 release of the Lamb ad, um, formerly known as the Australia Day Lamb ad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as always, subscribe, like, share, follow, and get down to futurist.world. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.